and uh, thank you so much. Open your Bible this morning, please, to the book of Ruth. Ruth chapter 1, we'll begin uh, reading in a moment, and we're going to do it just a little bit different today. I'm going to pray in just a second, and then read and explain, read and explain, and then bring the outline to you this morning, but we're going to spend a lot of time in Ruth chapter 2, so we'll begin in Ruth 1 and go over to Ruth chapter 2. I love the book of Ruth. It's only four chapters, but it's full, full, full of good stuff. And I think it was, I don't know when it was, several years ago I preached all the way through the book of Ruth, I think on a Wednesday night or a Sunday night, and uh, I enjoyed it. don't know if you did, but I enjoyed it. And uh, even now I, I have some of those sermons, I go and look at them and read them just for my own benefit, and it's just good stuff. The book of Ruth has a lot of wonderful things in it. And uh, maybe I'll preach through it again one day, we'll wait and see on that. But I want you to remain s sitting as I read the verses today, because I've told you I'm going to do it differently. Probably a long introduction and a short sermon, maybe. We'll see, okay? All right, before we go, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless His Word this morning. Father, thank You this morning for Your Word. Thank You, Lord, that You want to use Your Word today to speak to us. And would You do just that? Would You not let the words that are said today be so much the words of a preacher, but let it be the Word of God as it comes out of me? Would You, would you empower it, Lord? Would You bless not only the preaching of Your Word, but also... Uh, bless the listening of your word this morning, and whatever decision needs to be made, help us to make that, Lord, so you might receive all glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Look in Ruth chapter 1, please. I'm going to read down to verse 5, and I'm going to kind of talk as I read, and uh, I don't know of any other way to do it except for preaching like three sermons in one morning, and I know you don't want that. Um, I don't want to do that. So look in verse 1, Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says... Now it came to pass the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the, the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of the two sons, Malon and Chilion, Aphrodites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Real quick, look back in verse 1. The Bible says that these, this family, Elimelech and his wife and two sons, they go to Moab because there's a famine in Bethlehem. And the Bible uses the word sojourn. In other words, they're going to go for just a short amount of time. That was their plan. We're going to go there uh, until maybe things in Bethlehem get better, then we'll come back. But their plan was to go for just a little while and to spend a little bit of time in Moab. Okay, so they leave Bethlehem, which by the way, the word Bethlehem Judah means house of bread and house of praise. And they go to the place called Moab, which in the book of Psalms, God calls Moab, anybody know? God's wash pot. The illustration there is a pot used by the priest when they would clean the leprosy off of those with leprosy. They would take the rags and use this wash pot to clean the leprosy. And you imagine how filthy and nasty this wash pot would be. Well, that's where they have gone to. So Elimelech, Naomi, and the two sons, Malon and Chilion, have left the Bethlehem Judah, the house of praise, the house of bread, and gone to Moab, but just to sojourn for a little while. But verse 2 says what? It says that they continued... They continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. And they took of them wives of the women of Moab. And the name of the one was Orpah, the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there, listen to this, about ten years. They were just going to hang out for a while until things back home got better. Maybe go look for a job somewhere else. Maybe go and start over somewhere else. And... They thought, well, we'll just be gone for a little while, then we're going to come back to Bethlehem, and things are going to go well. But the Bible says that they, the sons, they married these Moabite ladies. By the way, we could take time. We don't have time this morning, but we could take time and go back to where God tells His children, do not go to Moab for any reason whatsoever. And if you happen to go there, never, ever, ever allow your sons to date Moabite girls because they're not, they're not uh, good girls. Verse 5, and Malon and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman, uh, woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Look in verse 6. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, 
that she might return from the country of Moab, for she heard in the country of Moab how the Lord was, had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore, she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. So let's take a break right there. Uh, the husband is dead. The two sons are dead. All that's left now is Naomi and Ruth and Orpah. Okay, so Naomi being wise, she, heard, she hears how things back home are, and she says to Orpah and to Ruth, well, let's go back because back in... Uh, back in Bethlehem, things are well. Things are improving. The economy is back up. Things are going well. I'm going to go back there. Verse 9. Uh, verse 8. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. In other words, you've given your husbands a good funeral. You've taken care of me. You two ladies go back home to Moab. You have family there. You know about the lifestyle there. You go back there, but I'm going to go back home to, to Bethlehem, Judah. Verse 9. The Lord grant you that he uh, may find you rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely, this is Naomi and Ruth speaking, surely, uh, this is uh, Ruth and Orpah speaking, surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, turn again, my daughters. Will, uh, why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be able to be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if it should have a husband also tonight and should bear, also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them having, uh, from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. Naomi says, Ruth and Orpah, you go back home. Why would you want to stay with me? I, I, I'm not married. I can't have any more children. If I have children today, are you going to hang out with me for 20 more years while those boys grow up to be men? You don't want to do that. We don't have that much time. You go back so your mom and your dad can take care of you. Verse 14. And we're getting to the, the main thought this morning. Verse 14. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, this is Naomi speaking to Ruth now, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods, little g. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. So Naomi says, Ruth, Orpah, she's kissed me goodbye. She's gone back home to her family, to her gods. You just go back there, and you, and you go with Ruth, uh, Orpah, and you stay there. Verse 16, And Ruth said, Entreat me uh, not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and watch your Bible here, please, and thy God, capital G, my God, capital G. Where thou diest, I will die, and there will I be buried. And the Lord, that's notice all capital letters, Jehovah God and the Lord, do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. So Ruth made the decision, I'm going to follow my mother-in-law. I'm going to place myself under her authority. I'm going to follow both my mother-in-law, Naomi, but more importantly, I'm going to follow her God, capital G. She didn't want the little gods of Moab with little g. She wanted the big god of Judah with the big G. <laughs> she made the decision, are you listening please? She made the decision to follow God. Ruth did. But Orpah didn't. The Bible says Orpah, she went back to her gods. She went back to the lifestyle of Moab. 
She went back to the worship in Moab. She went back to the, the idolatry. She went back to the wickedness. She went back to the wash pot when she could have gone to the house of bread, the house of praise, and followed the Lord. A couple of things I want you to see. Because of Ruth's loyalty and love for Naomi, and because of her allegiance to Naomi's God, she was able to see some wonderful things and was able to see some awesome things that only you can see when you follow God. Her life up to this point, we have no idea how old she is. Let's say she's around 30. I'm just throwing a number out there. Let's say 20 years of being raised in Moab and here 10 years she dwelt there with her husband in Moab. So let's say she's around 30 years old. The first 30 years were lived in God's wash pot. But Ruth made the decision to follow Naomi and follow Naomi's God and she was able to have a blessed life living in the house of bread and the house of praise. But Orpah, Orpah made a decision also. She decided to go back to her old lifestyle. She decided to go back to Moab and to Moab's false gods. And can I say this about Moab? Moab's a place you don't want to visit, much less live. But Orpah said, you know what, I'll take Moab. <clears throat> she went back to her old ways, went back to her old lifestyle. The place where God was neither wanted or worshipped. And that's where Orpah went back to. <clears throat> and here's what I want you to see in the last couple of moments. Because of her decision to follow the false gods of Moab and not the real God, Jehovah God, in the land of bread, in the house of praise in Bethlehem, she really missed out. She missed out. The title this morning is this, Orpah Missed Out. Notice three things real quickly that Orpah missed out on. First of all, she missed out on the providence of God. She missed out on the providence of God. Now look over in chapter 2, please. Look in verse 1. The Bible says this, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her half was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, uh, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Notice God's providence. Uh, Ruth missed, uh, or Orpah missed out on God's providence. The Bible says that Ruth makes a decision and she's going to go and she's going to glean in this particular field. The Bible uses the word half. In other words, uh, in other words it wasn't luck that brought Ruth to this certain field. It wasn't, you know, Ruth finally called a break. She'd had 30 years of misery, and now finally things are going in her favor. It wasn't luck. It wasn't coincidence. It wasn't, it wasn't Ruth just finally something good happening to her. It was not luck because I don't believe in luck, but I do believe in this, the providence of God. And Ruth experienced the providence of God in that, in that the Bible tells us in Leviticus 19 that when there's a man with a field, he is supposed to leave the corners of the field so the poor folks can come and get some uh, food that way. The Bible says this, look in Leviticus 19. Well, I put on your outline. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest, and thou... And, and thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 24, 19. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field and hast forgot a sheep in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, listen carefully, and for the widow that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. When thou beatest thine olive trees, thou shalt not go over the bows again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, check it out, and for the widow. So you see, in God's law, He made provision, if you will, for the widow. 
He made provision for the poor and for the fatherless. This was all because, are you listening? Because of the providence of God. And Ruth saw that. Ruth saw God provide. Ruth saw God's providence. Ruth saw God do this thing that only God can do. It was the providence of God. In Deuteronomy 22, 24, 19, goes a little bit further and it says... Leviticus 19 says, don't reap the corners, leave them for the poor people. And then God says to the, to the reapers, if you happen to have some of your sheaves all bundled up and ready to take to the threshing floor, if you happen to forget one or two, or happen to drop one or two, don't go back and get them. Uh, let the poor folks come pick those up. Ruth made the decision to follow Naomi's God and it put her in her position to see the providence of God. Think back in your life the last, I don't know how long. You've seen God do some things that only God can do. If you're saved, you've seen God save you, and only God can do that. You've seen God bless your home and bless your family. You've seen God meet your needs. You've heard God speak to you. You've seen His hand. Uh, you've heard His voice. It was not luck. It was not coincidence. It was not things finally going your way. It was the providence of God. And look at, and look at Ruth. <clears throat> the Bible says she's gleaning in a field, but not just any old field. <laughs> she just happens to wind up gleaning in the field of a man named Boaz. And the Bible tells us in verse 1 that Boaz was a mighty man of wealth, the richest man in town, with the biggest field in town. And no doubt his corn makes the best cornbread in town. Are you listening? And no doubt his wheat makes the best, what do you make of wheat, bread? Makes the best bread in town. And the barley in his field makes the best bean and bacon and barley soup in all of town. And this just happens to be the field where Ruth ends up gleaning. <clears throat> Not just any old field, but the field of Boaz. Naomi, uh, this is Naomi's kinsman. Again, we see the providence of God. Because this law of the kinsman was if you someone in your family needed you their husband had passed away and you your responsibility was if you chose to if you could afford to your responsibility was to take care of those people again God, God's providence, we, we see that Ruth gets to see, gets to glean the corners. She gets to pick up all the, the leftover sheaves, and now she gets to have the best field, the, the best wheat, and the best corn, and the best barley in all of the town. Of all the fields, off all the dirt roads, in all the county where Judah was, she happens to land at the richest man in town's field. And this guy just happens to be Naomi's kinsman. Here's the point. Here's point one. Ruth saw all that. She experienced all that. But Orpah missed out. Because she chose the Moabite gods and did not choose Jehovah God. She chose God's wash pot where Ruth chose God's blessing. So number one, she missed out on the providence of God. Number two, and listen quickly please, she missed out on the provision of God. Look in verse four. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servants that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? In other words, who is that girl? In verse 6, And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath uh, continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? 
Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide ye here fast with my, by my maidens. Verse 9, Let thine eye be on the field that they do reap. And go thou after them, have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Verse 10, And she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? So Boaz comes back. He's been, I guess, on a business trip somewhere looking for some more fields to buy. And he comes back and he, like all good bosses will do, they'll check out the work the guys have been doing. When he gets back, he notices, you know what? I've got all my reapers here, but there's... Who who is that? Who is that right there? He asked his supervisor, who is that? Who is that reaper? And the supervisor says, well, that's... That's Naomi's daughter-in-law. You, you heard about how 10 years ago about they left and they came back and this is the, this is the Ruth who came back with Naomi. Boaz, and we'll see it in a little bit, Boaz, you know, man, she's a hard worker. And plus, she's kind of easy on the eyes. <laughs> she's eye candy and she can work hard. So, uh, you know, I, I'm going to bless her I'm going to take care of her. And he goes to Ruth and he says, Ruth, you're working hard. I like the way you're working and and I like the way you're you're doing things. You're you're doing things the right way. And and, uh, yeah, you got some dirt under your fingernails and you're kind of sweating a little bit now, but I think you're kind of pretty too. And I I want to bless you. I want to help you. You can work not only in the corners, but I want you to, you can have your your way in my field. You can work where you want to work and you can drink water when you get thirsty up there on the well there where the, the, the men are drinking. I want to bless you for your faithfulness. I want to bless you for your hard work. God's providing for her. Boaz says to Ruth, don't go to another field. Stay here in my field and drink with the, where the men are drinking. And don't worry about anything because if they lay a finger on you, I'm going to break their arm. He didn't say that, but I just assume that's what he would have said. <clears throat> He's providing for her. Look in verse 14. It's it better. Boaz said unto her, At mealtime, come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and, and, he, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. <laughs> and so let's rewind a little bit. she just come from Moab, She made the decision she's going to follow Jehovah God. And she sees the providence of God. And now she sees God providing. He provided for her the corners of the field to glean. He provided for her the leftover sheaves. And the Bible says here that Boaz even says, you know what, come up to my house and we're going to have dinner and eat all you want. The Bible says she ate and was sufficed. That's a Bible way of saying she got her tummy full, she had a good time, and she went back to work. Look in verse 16. And he says unto his young men, verse 16, and let, some, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. She worked all day, had a good supper, went back to work, and to reap, and to gather, and beat out the sheaves, and and God blessed her with an ephah of barley. A lot of barley. About a bushel, I think they say. About a bushel, a lot of barley. And it goes back to, are you listening? Are you still with me? It goes back to Ruth's decision to follow God. She got to see God's providence and now gets to experience God's provision. But are you listening still? Orpah missed out. Orpah's back in Moab. uh, uh, Orpah's back in a place where now there's famine. 
Or, uh, Orpah's back in a place where the, the false gods are and the idolatry is and the wickedness is and the nastiness is and the, and the, and the witchcraft is and there's no, there's no food, there's no God, there's no anything. It's God's watch pot. Orpah missed out on all these blessings because she refused to follow God. He goes back to the place of both spiritual and physical famine. So she missed out on the provision of God. Number three, and we're, we'll be done. Orpah missed out on the protection of God. Read verse 16 again. And let, some also, uh, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. I don't have time to mention everything that's happened in the next couple of verses. But right here is important. Now this was, the date of this was about 1300 B.C. Long before the days of equal rights for men and women. This was a day where if a lady was to happen to have to work in the field, she might not be very safe. It would not be very pleasant for a lady who has to work in these fields because, you know, you have these young men here and these young men may not be as nice a guy as what Ruth was and what Boaz was. But the Bible says, Boaz told his men, don't you lay a hand on her, don't you touch, don't even look at her crazy and you let her glean what she wants to glean and drink what she wants to drink, let her eat what she wants to uh, eat, you leave her alone, uh, I want to bless her, I want to take care of her, I want to protect her. Maybe you're saying, well, what's that got to do with anything? It goes back to what I said earlier. Ruth made the decision to follow Naomi, her mother-in-law, and also Naomi's God. So she, she places herself under the authority of her mother-in-law. And so being under the authority of her mother-in-law, we can read later in verse or chapter 3 and chapter 4, when Naomi says, Ruth, go do this, well, she went and did that. Ruth, go do this, well, she went and did that. Ruth, don't do that, but she didn't go do that. And she was protected because she placed herself under the authority of her mother-in-law, Naomi, but she also, when she went to work those days, she placed herself under the authority of Boaz. And so Boaz protected her. Boaz would say, you can do this, she would do that. You can't do this, you, she wouldn't do that. Because she placed herself under the authority of Boaz, she was protected. The story ends. Ruth gets to marry Boaz. And Boaz takes care of Ruth and Naomi for the rest of their life. And Ruth, because she followed the God of Naomi and placed herself under the right authority, Ruth gets to be King David's grandmother and she gets to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Read Matthew chapter 1 someday. Say to our young people, God's placed over you in a umbrella of authority to protect you. God's given you the parents He's given you. It's His will. It's to protect you. So when they say don't, don't. And when they say do, do. God's placed you in the authority of a, of a teacher if you go to school. And if you're homeschooled, you have both a parent and a teacher all in the same person. And God's placed you in this church and given you a pastor and a youth pastor and Sunday school teachers and children's church workers and, and choir directors and deacons and ushers and uh, older adult ladies and men. He's placed you under their authority to protect you. So do what they say and don't do what they don't say to don't do. It's, it's protecting you. And here's, here's the last point we're going to wrap up. Because Ruth followed Naomi and Naomi's God, she was protected. 
and blessed to be able to marry Boaz and be King David's grandmother and be in the lineage uh, uh, of Jesus Christ. But Orpah, she went back and she missed all that. You say, what happened to Orpah? Let me read Amos chapter 2, please. Amos chapter 2, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Amos is speaking, for three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime. But I will send fire upon Moab and it shall devour the palaces of Kerioth and Moab shall die with tumult with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet, and I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof and will slay all the princes thereof with him, saith the Lord. Things didn't turn out very well for Orpah. If I read my Bible correctly, and I think I am, she was destroyed with everything else in Moab. Never hear of her again. She might have one day got right with God, but we don't know about it. All we know is what Ruth te- the Bible tells us in Ruth, she made the decision to go back to Moab, follow the Moabite gods, and could care less about Jehovah God. And the Bible says in Amos chapter 2 that she probably was destroyed with all of Moab. But Ruth was able to see the providence, the provision, and the protection of God. Can I say to you this morning, don't miss out. Don't miss out. Can you stand to your feet this morning, please? Every head's bowed, every eye's closed for just a moment. <clears throat> Maybe this morning you find yourself where Orpah found herself, time to make a decision. And maybe you've made the decision for whatever reason that you're not going to be as close to God as you should be. And you're going to replace the gods of Jehovah God, you're going to replace the Lord and His blessings, His protection, His provision, His providence for the things of Moab or the things of the world. If that's you this morning, you're headed down the same road that Orpah headed down and you're going to miss out. Don't miss out. Don't be like Orpah. Be like Ruth and follow Jehovah God. Father, we do bow before.